Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In this lecture, we will give more details about the impact of the physical structure of the double excited systems on the developed torque. Basically, this lecture gives idea about how to predict the developed torque components of the machines. Let's start with this double excited system that we already discussed in the previous two lectures. In the previous two lectures, we have explained the behavior of the inductances and we have derived the total torque expression of this system. This double excited system has a special structure or geometry that makes the stator self-inductance and the rotor self-inductance and the mutual inductance changes with respect to rotor position as shown. The total torque expression has three terms because of the variation of these three inductances. The first term of the total torque expression is produced because of the variation of the stator self-inductance LSS. The second term is produced because of the variation of the rotor self-inductance LRR. The third term is produced because of the variation of the mutual inductance M. These inductances can be represented mathematically as follows. LSS of theta equal L1 plus L2 cosine 2 theta. LRR of theta equal L3 plus L4 cosine 2 theta. M of theta equal M hat cosine theta. The derivative of these inductances with respect to rotor position can be identified as follows. By substituting these derivatives into the torque expression, the total torque expression of the system can be represented as shown. This torque expression components can be plotted as shown. The orange waveform represents the sum of the stator and rotor reluctance torque components. The pink waveform represents the mutual interaction torque component. The blue torque waveform represents the total torque which represents the sum of the reluctance and mutual torque components. Note that the mutual interaction torque component is always greater than the reluctance torque. There is no doubt that this total generated torque will cause some movement. However, the movement is not continuous rotational movement. Basically, this system needs to be modified to have more coils to achieve continuous rotational movement. I would like to highlight here that this sinusoidal relationship between the torque and angle does not mean that the practical rotating machines will generate sinusoidal torque components in the normal operation. The torque generated by industrial continuous rotating machines is constant value or average value for certain load value as shown. Basically, in the actual rotating machines, we will have multiple coils in the stator and maybe multiple coils in the rotor to achieve constant or average torque component only. However, that does not mean that this torque angle relationship is not important or not valid. This relationship is still valid in the actual machines. This relationship can help during the design of the machines and during the control design of the machines. Without going into more details, if we need to achieve high or maximum torque, for example, then we need to design and control the machine to operate at angle where the torque is maximum as shown. Now we would like to emphasize again that this system has three torque components because all the inductances of this system are changing with respect to rotor position. Note that this is not a general rule for all double or multiple excited machines. Most of the important machines in a practice have one or two of these inductances changing with respect to rotor position. Note that the mutual interaction torque component is available in almost all machines. In conclusion, the physical structure or the geometry of the machine determines the inductances variation with rotor position and therefore the type of torque components produced by the machine. Let's take some examples. 
This example represents double excited system with cylindrical stator and rotor. This cross-section machine structure represents the structure or geometry of the induction machine. As discussed in previous lectures, this machine geometry has a uniform air gap and therefore the inductances relationship with respect to rotor position are as shown. As we can see, the stator self-inductance and rotor self-inductance are not changing with rotor position. The mutual inductance is the only inductance in this machine structure that changes with respect to rotor position. Therefore, the torque expression of this machine will be equal to the mutual interaction torque component only because the stator and rotor reluctance torque components are zero. By taking the derivative of the mutual inductance, the final torque expression will be equal to T equal minus I s i r m hat sine theta this torque expression can be plotted as shown it is very clear that the direction or sign of the mutual interaction torque component depends on the current's direction as well as the rate change of mutual inductance. If we assume that the excitation stator current IS and rotor excitation current IR have same mathematical sign, then the torque direction will depend on the rate change of mutual inductance only. Now, if we need to determine the direction of the torque, we can plot the mutual inductance and torque relationships and investigate the torque direction based on the increase of the mutual inductance. For example, if we align the rotor at 170 degree position and then excite the stator and rotor coils, the direction of the torque will be negative and in anti-clockwise direction because the inductance increases in this direction. Note that the rotor will eventually stop at zero degree where the inductance is maximum. Now, if we locate the rotor at 190 degree position and then excite the stator and rotor coils, the direction of the torque will be positive and in a clockwise direction because the inductance increases in this direction. Note that the rotor will eventually stop at 360 degree position where the inductance is maximum. It is very clear now that the generated torque of this double excited system will cause some movement. However, the movement is not continuous rotation. To achieve rotational movement, we need multiple coils in the stator and maybe multiple coils in the rotor. Let's take another example. This machine cross-section structure consists of cylindrical stator and salient pole rotor. This machine represents the basic structure of the salient pole synchronous machine. Based on this machine geometry, the stator self-inductance LSS is changing with respect to rotor position. These two figures show the stator magnetic field distribution at different rotor position. As we can see, the air gap seen by the stator magnetic field of this machine is different at different rotor position. In other words, the magnetic field distribution is different at different rotor position. This is why the stator self-inductance LSS is changing with respect to rotor position. Note that the thick magnetic field lines represent strong magnetic field and the thin magnetic field lines represent weak magnetic field. Now let's see if the rotor self-inductance LRR is changing with respect to rotor position. These these figures show the rotor magnetic field distribution at different rotor position. As we can see, although the rotor magnetic field is rotating, the air gap seen by the rotor magnetic field does not change with respect to rotor position. That is why the rotor self-inductance LRR does not change with respect to rotor position. Now let's investigate the mutual inductance behavior with respect to rotor position. In general, 
general, the mutual inductance value depends on how much magnetic field that is generated by one coil and going to link the second coil. Please review the previous two lectures for more details. As we can see from these figures, the mutual inductance M has different values at different rotor position. Therefore, the mutual inductance is changing with respect to rotor position and can be represented mathematically by m of theta equal m hat cosine theta. In conclusion, the inductance's relationship with respect to rotor position of this machine are as shown. Therefore, the total torque expression will be equal to only two components, the stator reluctance torque component and the mutual interaction torque component as shown. Note that the rotor reluctance torque component is zero because the rotor self-inductance does not change with rotor position. Based on this torque expression, the torque components can be plotted as shown. The orange waveform represents the stator reluctance torque component. The pink waveform represents the mutual interaction torque component. The blue waveform represents the total torque which represents the sum of the stator reluctance torque and the mutual torque components. The last example is this cross-section structure which consists of salient pole stator and cylindrical rotor. This machine structure represents the basic structure of DC machine. Note that we are not studying in this lecture the operation principle of the DC machine. However, we are now just investigating this cross-section geometry or physical structure that looks like DC machine. Based on this machine geometry, the stator self-inductance is constant with respect to rotor position. In other words, the stator magnetic field will see same air gap at any rotor position. This figure shows the stator magnetic field distribution. It is very clear that the air gap seen by the stator magnetic field of this machine does not change if we rotate the rotor. That is why the stator self-inductance is constant with respect to rotor position. Now let's see if the rotor self-inductance changes with respect to rotor position. These figures show the rotor magnetic field distribution at different rotor position. As we can see, the air gap seen by the the rotor magnetic field changes with respect to rotor position. In other words, the rotor magnetic field distribution is different at different rotor position. That is why the rotor self-inductance changes with respect to rotor position. Now let's investigate the mutual inductance behavior with respect to rotor position. As we can see from these figures, the mutual inductance M has different values at different rotor position. Therefore, the mutual inductance is changing with respect to rotor position and can be represented mathematically by M of theta equal M hat cosine theta. In conclusion, the inductance's relationship with respect to rotor position of this machine is as shown. Therefore, the total torque expression will be equal to only two components, the rotor reluctance torque component and the mutual interaction torque component. Based on this torque expression, the torque components can be plotted as shown. It is very interesting to know that the total torque expression of the actual DC machine consists of only one torque component which is the mutual interaction torque component. The reason is that the actual DC machine is designed with two brushes located at 90 degree with respect to stator magnetic field. So with this design, theta will be 90 degree. At this operating point, the rotor reluctance torque is zero and the mutual torque is maximum. Therefore, the total torque of the actual DC machine consists of only one component, which is the mutual interaction torque component. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and we'll continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan Al-Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.